Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley speaking to you from Washington, D.C. Many important events this past week that deserve comment. Why don't we start with what appears to be some progress on the question of ending the Syrian civil war, but of course doing it in the right way with the defeat and disbanding and dispersal of the foreign jihadi butchers, terrorists, lunatics, psychotics that have been put in there by Saudi Arabia and Turkey. A lot of diplomacy around this uh, question. Don't forget Qatar. They do it too. Uh, maybe the best place to start is the trip of Kerry to Moscow last Tuesday, where he met with Putin and came out announcing that uh, Russia, Putin, and Obama regard Syria, quote, in fundamentally the same way, close quotes. Now, a lot of you can see a lot of the uh, U.S. neocon attitudes by looking at the Washington Post, which, of course, is a neocon paper. It is the uh, historically the voice of the Federal Reserve System going back to uh, going back to Eugene Meyer, Catherine Meyer, Graham and so forth. But in particular, it's the uh, neocons these days. The neocons are not happy. There is no joy in the neocon Mudville uh, as there is this time. So the U.S. and Russia see Syria, quote, in fundamentally the same way. Now, some people um, try to say this is um, simply diplomatic verbiage, but the Washington Post, as I say, is very upset. Um, Kerry then went on. The United States uh, and Russia... The, I'm sorry, the United States and our partners, the United States and the 60-plus members of the coalition against ISIS are not seeking so-called regime change, not seeking so-called regime change. Now, the context of that is also important. It came in the context of a rebuff to the moderate terrorist opposition, right? The moderate terrorists. It means every terrorist except al-Qaeda and except ISIS. All the rest of them are wonderful heroes of democracy. And of course, we know we know better uh, these various uh, somewhat obscure groups, Jaish al-Islam, that would be Islamic army in my limited Arabic, Jarar al-Sham, terrorists of Syria, Sham. Um, all of them are supposed to be essentially valid interlocutors, right? Okay to talk to. ISIS not, and uh, and then, of course, uh, Al-Qaeda not, right? It'd be hard to give that one up uh, 15 years, 16, 14, 15 years after 9-11 in terms of their mythology. So the context is that a group of moderate terrorists had sent in a demand, as usual, the preconditions, right? They don't want to talk, so they get out of it by laying down preconditions. They wanted Assad to quit immediately. And uh, Kerry says that is a non-starting position. That is a hopeless position to go in with because the United States already agreed that Assad could stay at least for the first few months of a, quote, transition process, unquote. So no more regime change. Uh, let's, let's follow with the Washington Post. Mr. Kerry's rhetorical capitulation was cover, coupled with the observation that it, the administration does uh, not, quote, believe that Assad himself has the ability to uh, lead the future of Syria. Okay, so they're trying to uh, dress that up. But um, there is no doubt that something has shifted, and it's, uh, it looks like it might be positive. So uh, the question now is, 
who these people will be. Well, there is a gaggle of terrorists, killers, butchers, psychotics, kill you as soon as look at you. And they are assembled, of course, by the great shepherd of terrorism, the Saudi Arabian degenerate Dark Ages monarchy. And they have got this gaggle of killers that they say represent the uh, people on the ground. Now, remember what an impossible task this is. It is still estimated that there are no fewer than 300, 300 sects, sectlets, cliques, uh, and other political formations uh, that that control something, right? They might control a, uh, a pile of horse manure near Aleppo, and they somehow then have a say in what's going on. And the most important thing is, Remember that most of those people are foreigners. They're foreigners. They are not Syrians. Um, the largest group when it comes to ISIS is Iraqis, because that's where the thing was created. It was created, ISIS was created, Daesh, whatever you call it, the caliphate. That goes back to an organization created by our dear friend, General David Petraeus, with the help of Ryan Crocker at the State Department and everybody who was on that staff. And various times, General Allen, our dear friend, was also part of this. So uh, that is, that's the center of gravity of ISIS. So it's, that's mainly an Iraqi group, although they have their headquarters in, uh, in Syria, right, in Raqqa, because that's easier for them. So uh, that's, that's one side of it. But then over on the Syrian side, uh, ISIS is not welcome, but there are these other 300 groupings, and some are controlled by Saudis, some are controlled by Turkey. Those are the two largest groups. Then Qatar, then, of course, the French have some, the CIA has some, all sorts of people have them. It's better to lose them than to gain them. And indeed, one of the hopes of this entire situation is if the famous Gerablus Corridor could be closed, as we have been recommending vehemently, especially for about the last two months, but actually going back about six months. We're saying that if you close that Gerablus Corridor, you're going to trap and pocket and encircle a large proportion of the terrorists that are abroad and at large in the world. And that would be a great plus some of them might surrender, but for the others, if resistance continues, well, there's nothing to do but uh, draw the necessary consequences. Now, uh, the Saudi and the Saudi groups are terrorists. They're just the terrorists controlled by by the ones that we've just said. Uh, they're just as terrorist as ISIS and Al Qaeda. They're just not as powerful. They're not as uh, capable. Uh, so that's one component of this process, right? That some represent re representatives, right? These, some, some, uh, you know, more presentable, right? Not, not, uh, this pile of dirty laundry that these people usually represent, but try to get somebody presentable, put them in a business suit and, and send them into the negotiations and call that the, uh, the rebel, uh, representative, of course, controlled by Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. But then there's also this this will of the wisp. It's hard to know what to call it. The Saudis this week said, look here, we've got this coalition of uh, quite a number of Islamic countries, and they're going to have a worldwide anti-terror alliance. We'll tell you what that really represents here in a minute, okay? Back on the crisis video. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C., a week from Christmas. Uh, best wishes of the season to all, and of course, New Year's after that. And best wishes to everybody on that. Um, we'll be seeing you next uh, weekend at the usual time. So turn off those stupid football games and learn something. Tune in to... World Crisis Radio at the various places where you can find it, in particular, topley.net. But now, there's supposed to be a, an anti-terror coalition 
led by the Saudis. Right? And, and you remember, we've had the coalition of the willing. We've had the coalition of the shilling. We've had the coalition of the arm-twisted ones. This one, I think, is looking very much like the coalition of the surprised. Because the Saudis put out this list. It's actually rather comical. Right? With all that money, couldn't you bribe some officials? Um, you know, at least to, uh, you know, to be noncommittal. But no, um, they put out this thing saying, hello, world, this is Saudi Arabia, your friendly Dark Ages monarchy. And here's the list of all countries that are now going to be working with us against terrorism worldwide. God help us. So um, Pakistan, probably the, uh, well, one of the larger, largest of this, uh, they say, <laughs> What a surprise it is for us to be included. We're not included. We don't want to be included. And I think something similar has gone on with some other countries that are not immediately part of this Middle East question. That would be to say Indonesia, Malaysia, right, out there in Southeast Asia and uh, those uh, – that uh, area. So if uh, Pakistan – Indonesia, those are two of the very largest uh, Muslim countries, plus Malaysia, right? Always a leader since the days of uh, Mahathir Mohammed, one of our favorite people on this broadcast. Um, if those guys say they're not included or they, they didn't understand it that way or something, right? Then uh, this looks like a fraud. Now, that's obviously the attempt of the Saudis to influence this process of negotiation, which is going on now uh, in New York City. We'll talk about that in just a second. But at the same time, it also looks like a vehicle for the Saudis and others like them to ship in terrorists. What could they be doing? What do they do? What do they have? Arguments? No, they have money for bribery. And if that doesn't work, they've got to have some enforcers. And those are the jihadis, the Wahhabites. Uh, and the Salafists, right? And these are closely related, maybe not identical, but close enough for our purposes, right? So the Wahhabites and the Salafists uh, provide these uh, terrorists and the Saudis uh, direct them, right? It's kind of their irregular army, their fifth column, right? When Allenby was attacking Damascus, he had Lawrence of Arabia out there with the Saudis, the, the precursors of the Saudi monarchy were out there in the desert as the fifth column to protect Allenby's flank as he advanced towards Damascus. Right, You've all seen that in the movie. So uh, this Saudi uh, anti-terror coalition, uh, quite obviously a uh, complete fraud. Now, we have this negotiation going on in New York. Now, based on what Kerry had said, right, Kerry – as we just heard from the very angry and, uh, and dismayed uh, neocons over there at the Washington Post, right? If it's true that the U.S. and Russia see Syria, quote, in fundamentally the same way, close quote, that the demand for the immediate ouster of Assad is, is a, quote, non-starting position, position because there's going to be a transition process, also in quotes, even though Assad is not, uh, as, as Kerry thinks, not for the long run. But in effect, this this is all changing. Now, here we have, at a hotel in Midtown, we have Lavrov of Russia, and we have Kerry. And actually, one, one of the, can I say, a positive surprise is that Lavrov seems to have been able to uh, to bring about a certain rationality on the part of Kerry. Uh, which is a surprise, right? And Obama has done nothing to sabotage this. So this is now the, uh, it's Lavrov, Kerry, and uh, Stefan de Mistura, the uh, United Nations special rep for Syria. And they are drawing up a roadmap. And this roadmap is supposed to be voted into international law by the United Nations Security Council. So it includes a ceasefire, for all except ISIS and al-Qaeda, who are excluded, that much has been maintained. I guess that's the Russian demand. 